going on, Wolves and Warriors? My name's Jay Stewart, and this is the Better Body Academy podcast, the number one show for those looking to permanently overhaul their mind and body without dumb diets and unsustainable workout programs. We banish the fitness industry BS and replace it with science-backed strategies proven through countless client transformations. In the Better Body Academy, we help busy men and women around the world get unstuck and back into momentum so they start feeling strong and sexy again. Our mission is to transform one million lives and you, my friend, could be next. And on that note, let's get straight into today's show. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Better Body Academy podcast, the podcast that you come to when you're sick of the dumb diets and unsustainable workout programs. And I'm joined by one of the most beautiful, determined, strong, powerful Scottish wee lasses you will ever meet. Good morning, Nikki. How are you? Yeah, I am wee Nikki. <laughs> I'm really good, thanks, Jace. Um, yeah, having a really good day. Um, just been really, really busy. But yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this podcast um, tonight because... This is a topic, you know, it's, it's really close to my heart um, and I really try and help women out with this and just sort of try and help impart what I know about it and to help women achieve what, what I have. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go deep on this uh, very yeah. soon. So uh, I love that so much. Now, guys, um, yesterday you may have seen, if you're watching live on Facebook, that we posted about a masterclass, um, which is coming up next weekend. It's a three-day masterclass. Mm for ladies only so if you're interested in coming along to the masterclass we're going to be debunking all the garbage around these fad diets and crazy unsustainable practices and give you ladies who are interested a little bit more guidance on a right way forward but if you want to register it's a free free day masterclass you will find the link at betterbodyacademy.com forward slash wealthy spelt w e double l t h y betterbodyacademy.com forward slash wealthy, W-E-L-L-T-H-Y. Let's get stuck into today's podcast. Uh, so we might start with a question around mm -hmm. who are you, Nick? Where do you live? What's your go? Tell me some stuff about yourself. Because a lot of the men that are watching won't know who you are and obviously the women that aren't part of the program. Oh. No, it kind of sounds like I was on a little bit of a, a dating show there. <laughs> but there <laughs> we go. <laughs> you know what you're looking for. Okay, I'm uh, I'm Coach Nikki. Um, as you'll be able to maybe tell, a lot of you might know me by now, but I'm from Scotland. Um, I am 40 years old. Um, yeah, I know I don't quite look it. <laughs> um, and I wasn't always into fitness and I wasn't always you know, active and, and looking like this. I was a completely different person if you saw me a few years ago. So um, I've lost, I keep saying it, and it always, I mean, it feels like I say it a lot, but I know it's an achievement. I've lost 110 pounds overall um, in my journey, I know. <laughs> but to me, because I say it all the time, I kind of feel like it's ingrained in me now that it's, that it's nothing. And I'm and I'm used to being this person now, which is, is very, very strange. That person has gone. I mean, it is literally a whole person <laughs> has gone. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've been into the fitness industry for, oh, it's a few years now. Um, I started on my weight loss journey probably about five, six years ago, but I was quite a novice then. And a lot of you ladies and guys will know once you start on this journey, you get a love for it and you go deep into it. And then mm -hmm. I became a PT and now I'm a coach with the, the Better Body Academy and I, I couldn't be in a better place. <laughs> so girl, tell me, um, when you say you are a different person now, mm. what, do you, what do you actually mean by that? Well... When you're, when you're sort of in that state of being stuck, being overweight, you, you kind of feel like there's no way out. So unfortunately, that can sort of project as being negative as well. So I was quite a negative person before. I always felt like the world was out to get me and that things were never going to change. And I was just always stuck to be Nikki from Scotland, who was fat. But no so I completely overhauled everything I changed my life and now I don't let that negativity affect me really mm. at all now so I'm a completely different person to who I was then 
to who I was now, you'd think I'd had a whole personality shift, but <laughs> it is just because of the weight. You become such a positive person. The world is a good place, guys. That's what that's what I was going to ask. So, so why were you negative? Were you negative because you felt like the world was kind of digging its claws into you or, and, and what weight were you at when you kind of started your transformation? Where's the highest you got to? Um, It was approximately 225 pounds. Um, It was over the 14 stone mark for you um, UK guys. And it was sort of like a perception of it's a, I think I likened it to a mirror before when I did this, like you look in the mirror and you hate yourself and you're projecting that hate back but what you perceive people mm. giving you negativity is actually just you feeling the negativity yourself mm. and it's mm. just that projection. So, yeah. Do you think that someone who is of a completely normal weight, um, mm. but they're stuck mentally, do you think that they can have the same thing, the same, yes. the same sufferance? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you're not happy with how you look, because it's actually quite a rare thing in the world to be happy with how you look it's just something that us as humans I don't think we're always attaining for something better Mm. even someone that's of normal weight yeah absolutely they're absolutely valid to think that you know that they're not good enough and that that's what they want to change in themselves absolutely Mm. And and it's like, it's a very hard thing to avoid, but it's also like, I think of the downline, if your sense of self, happiness, image, esteem is completely based around how yeah. you look, well, then how are you going to be when you're like 70 and 80 and 90 and 100 and you're like a bag of bones that probably doesn't look that good, but, but mm-hmm. if you're still sharp in the mind, like there's going yeah. to be a dispatch between, you know, how you feel and <laughs> how you look, but yeah. yeah yeah we do there's digress yeah no so just basically there's varying degrees of body dysmorphia guys it doesn't have to be a full-on out sort of mental illness there's you know there's little varying degrees of it even just a little bit but that's where the mindset training comes in of uh, the body better body academy we are mm. there to change all that guys yeah, well, we're going to talk more about that on a different episode because I think bringing in a woman's perspective would be really, really great. So let's talk about what we want to talk about in this episode, and that is uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. So to the men out there that are watching, uh, they won't have a clue what this is. Right? So do you want to explain? Women don't. <laughs> well, that's it. So let's, so let's shine yeah. a little bit of light on it. So what, what is this condition yeah. and how is it relevant for you? So... A lot of it now is actually about one in 10 women in the world. And I mean, in the world actually suffer from this. So that's lots of people, guys. That's and it goes undiagnosed a lot of the time. The only time sometimes it might come out into, you know, when it's getting diagnosed is when you're struggling to get pregnant or you're like, well, why can't I get pregnant? And you go to the doctor and that's a lot of the time why it might get diagnosed. But Polycystic ovaries, it's just that it's a common condition that affects women, but it's it doesn't actually have to be cysts on the ovaries. It could actually um, mean, you know, you've got other things going on, like irregular periods and things like that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when, like, breaking down the actual name of it, polycystic, I'm guessing that means multiple cysts. Where, where, um, like, yeah. what, what's the, what, yeah. how, how are they caused? Like, why does this happen? Um, it, it's just a hormonal condition. So, sorry, I'm actually getting really nervous. <laughs> no, I don't. It's fine. Um, um, so it's just it's a hormonal condition. Um, polycystic ovary. So, Jace, can you help me out a little bit? <laughs> For sure. Well, I think the the right. big thing is here is that it, it's like the, I think this is it, right? It's something that's not talked about very often. And mm-hmm. if we're talking about like literally one in ten women actually have mm-hmm. this condition. Like that's super common. That's yeah. super common. We're talking 10% of all humans or women have this condition. And so I think the reason that we wanted to do this podcast and brave, bravo Nikki, Nikki for actually talking about this because uh, this hard is, one. <laughs> it, it is because it's a, it's a, it's a difficult, actually a difficult condition to talk about. And I think where a lot of people maybe just don't talk about it or they ignore it or they don't think it's that big a deal. Okay. So was this something that you were diagnosed with at an early age or later in life? Um, it was quite an early age. Um, mm-hmm. I, 
it's it's hereditary okay so it, 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 it's well it's not always hereditary it runs in families a lot of the time so if mm-hmm. your mum has got it or maybe mm-hmm. a sister or an aunt then you're maybe more than likely to have it but I was diagnosed at the age of uh, 21 and I didn't have a clue that I had up until then Mm -hmm. I had actually gotten pregnant no problems Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. with my first son who was Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually 21 I was 21 and it was when I uh, come back because I lived abroad and it's when I came back to actually have him things started to go just a little bit funny so I started to put on weight um Mm -hmm. And I just thought at that age, you know, I like the food. I like to go out partying and, you know, I kind of just put it down to that a little bit. I didn't really care about it because I had like the partying lifestyle going on. I started to get really, really bad acne on my face. Now, when I say acne, I don't just mean a little pimple mm. here and there. I mean really, really big cystic acne all over your face now that in itself is awful it's the painful to touch I used to have to go to work in the morning I knew people were looking at me and it was that was one of the most awful things about it Um, you'd get excessive hair growth so Mm -hmm. when you see a woman maybe walking down the street and she's got like hair on her face you might laugh at her guys, which is obviously awful to do because it's just different. It's mm. That's not what a woman should look like. But what polycystic ovaries does is it gives you excess androgens, which is the male hormones, which causes you to get male pattern yeah, hair yeah. growth. It's, <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's right. really, really tough. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, that's super confronting because I'm trying to think of there's probably been a time where um, even myself, like just being honest, like probably mm-hmm. naively have said something or, or thought a certain thing and not really considered the reasons to why that could actually be the case. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of hits hard. So how do you know you have it? Is it, a, is it a thing that gets diagnosed by obviously a doc, but how do you kind of yeah I mean you'll go to the doctors because you might be feeling what it actually gives you as well it gives you really quite severe pelvic pain um like your periods may stop irregular periods so Mm -hmm. really to diagnose it there's um four different types of polycystic ovaries as well because that's actually needs to be put out of there I think um you actually need to know Mm -hmm. which type you have to be able to treat it but I can talk about that in a bit so the the symptoms you will have is like irregular periods no ovulation you're sort of semi-infertile you've got um facial hair you can have male pattern baldness is what it's called so it's it's a little bit funny you might be hairy all over your body but you actually go bald on your head I'm I'm okay Mm. thankfully but a lot of women get it like you know the male pattern baldness that comes around there they'll lose a lot of their hair Mm. so that in itself is actually you know really really distressing Mm. it's Mm. it seems to be like obviously as you've said it's taking on the natural um hormonal Mm. profile of what men experience yes yeah Yeah. totally okay Mm. so so um once it's kind of once you're kind of diagnosed with it, how does it, how does it affect you or how did it affect you during your kind of 20 years that you had it? It, it affects you actually quite badly, but it affects um, every woman differently. And people are learning, well, the doctors are learning a lot more about it now. Because mm. before when you used to go to the doctor, they might have just thrown the contraceptive pill at you. And all that does is just mask the issue. Right. Um, and it might actually just make it worse but what it does it gives you the weight gain it gives you the acne and believe it or not because it, it's a, a hormone condition I've actually got an underactive thyroid now because of polycystic ovaries because right. of all the you know the feedback loop of all the hormones the DEHA so that has caused me to have an underactive thyroid and when you have life. an underactive thyroid, <laughs> that generally causes a slight slowing of your metabolism or, or yep. a big slowing of metabolism, yep. which is probably big, why yep. people gain a lot of weight. Yes. So it's like oh. a double dunk. So you've got polycystic wow. ovaries, which is causing you to put on lots of weight anyway. It's causing um, you to have lots of um, hair growth, the pain. It causes depression and anxiety. Now, the doctors are just piecing this together now, too, because 
it um the hormones it sort of stops the chemical and well balance in your brain as well so it causes a lot of depression issues and um, yeah it's a really deep-seated issue for women that goes um undiagnosed a lot of the time there's so many women that's walking about in the town in your area right now you know you might suspect that you might have it as well it's mm. um wow and so you've managed to have three beautiful kids yeah <laughs> so that's a that's a kind of a, a lucky thing is is there like sort of question off guard is there any way to know like what your rate of fertility is going to be like is that something that determines that or no not really but what they do is they actually give you an internal ultrasound scan so it's like a big rod um i know this is going to sound a little right. bit crude. it's a big rod so it's right. an internal ultrasound scan and what it shows is polycystic ovaries is not actually cysts what they are is fluid filled sacs on the ovary and right. when you get your ultrasound it's like a black string of pearls so that's actually the sort of nickname for them you would get it mm -hmm. so it's the black string of of perils and that's how they would determine if you know you were ovulating okay. to be able to have kids it's not impossible a lot of women fear that it's impossible to get pregnant they get maybe quite desperate they'll try anything the doctors actually prescribe metformin um for this as well which is um a diabetic drug yes and um, that makes sense because most of the cases of polycystic ovaries 70 percent it's actually been uh, proven is insulin resistant so as you'll know, being um, the dietitian, you'll know all about insulin mm. and how that in the glucose in the blood and how that affects weight gain as well. So that's one of the ways to actually treat it is you mm. actually come to the root cause of treating the insulin resistance um, and then you're able to sort of reverse the symptoms almost. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a lady watching this and then uh, either I, I have diagnosed, have got it, Mm. We, we mentioned that there's a genetic element to it yeah is it typically that the uh weight gain causes the polycystic ovaries or the the polycystic ovaries condition causes the weight gain or is it kind of like this both it weight all gain? depends on the type of polycystic ovaries you have so i'll just quick give you a rundown of them you've got inflammatory polycystic mm. ovaries Mm -hmm. um, which is less common. That's the one that can cause your thyroid functions. You've got your insulin resistant ones. You've got your pill um, causing ones, your contraceptive pill. That's the only one that you can cure. That's the only one that will get better. And then you've got your adrenal. So you are actually born with this condition. Weight in itself does not cause it. So you are born with it, but your weight gain can set things off. Um, mm -hmm. like with me it was pregnancy believe it or not that actually set it off because it's just an uh, imbalance in hormones that's all it takes is to set that sort of horrible thing in motion for the rest of your life <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. my gosh it's like one of the things that I, I'm kind of going off script here but one of the things that you know seeing my partner um, have a child just made me think to myself like how could any man physically hurt a woman like mm -hmm. with all of the stuff they go through uh yeah. you know from from kind of childbirth to something like this i'm sure look there's the stuff that men <laughs> suffer as well you know high depression rates and suicide and this type of stuff but mm -hmm. at the same account any man that that could lay a hand on a woman for me is so fucking gutless that oh, yeah. that oh just like hearing this story and how brave you know you've had to be to kind of traverse this um mm -hmm wow it is okay. awful it is awful it, it makes you sort of you don't want to go anywhere it makes you feel like you can't do anything like you're stuck the, the depression it, it's just truly awful and a lot of people don't appreciate just how bad it is and the doctors don't give you enough time mm. especially when it's one in ten women yeah. who suffer from it. it it's flipping crazy it actually yeah. is so that's why i try and learn everything about it because I actually had to go to the doctors and I was like I've got this I need this and I need this and they opened a book and they were like oh okay <laughs> so I went to them and sort of said blah 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 because they don't know enough about it mm. obviously specialists do but your general practitioner when you're first getting diagnosed all they're interested in like you see is giving you the contraceptive pill or 
you know, about your periods just to try and get them regulated. They're not, or tell you to lose weight. That's the big one that gets me. You go to the doctors and say, all you need to do is lose weight, but it's so freaking hard <laughs> to lose weight when you've got, if you don't know what you're doing to lose weight with polycystic ovaries. So how, so how has your uh, polycystic condition improved with your transformation? Like, how does that, does mm-hmm. that, is that, are they related at all? The, the gravity yeah. that you've, yeah. Oh yeah. Like, boom, <laughs> got to show the guns. Absolutely related. Um, the doctors are not wrong. It's just the way they go about it by mm-hmm. saying you lose the weight, things will get better, mm-hmm. but it's, the women don't know where to start, so it's all relative. I my symptoms I would say are ninety nine percent gone. Um, they will cut. They can come back. You can get flared ups because you cannot and do not listen to anybody that says that you can cure polycystic ovaries. Mm. They are actually you're just looking for you know your money and they're trying to get you to buy something from them. You can't cure it polycystic ovaries is there with you forever Mm -hmm. but it can be managed and it can be managed well if you know how right and Mm -hmm. so so what you would advise in this circumstance Mm -hmm. is is your weight loss journey if it's predominantly a weight-based case is going to be probably more difficult because we've got the extra layer there of dealing with perhaps a slowed metabolism and it's going to be something maybe you need the guidance of a coach for assistance with or absolutely absolutely so that's why I've got a few of the ladies on my team at the moment who've got polycystic ovaries and currently helping them so the guidance like I said Mm -hmm. before just to move back the 70% of them have got insulin resistant because to beat it you need to know what kind of polycystic ovaries you've got because you need to go to the root cause of it the insulin resistant ones is um, thankfully one of the easier ones to treat. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is through your diet, exercise and supplements. Now, I say supplements. I don't normally recommend supplements to the normal woman. The normal mm-hmm. woman does not need supplements. So maybe your pre- protein, maybe your creatine, you know, if you're in, into the gym and things. But for women with polycystic ovaries, supplements are actually crucial to add in so I've got a stack of supplements I take myself and I advise all my ladies of these but I tell them please go and research them on your own before you take them and uh, yep so then that's the say the weight is basically falling off they're feeling great their skin is looking fantastic um yeah so that is Mm. the three things well for a coach (laughs) nutrition your training and a stack of supplements that actually greatly help you because we do need it. We've got deficiencies in B vitamins, which make us super, super tired. Mm-hmm. Um, Inositol, um, I, I'm actually, I won't go through them all because there's so many of supplements to take, um, but we do so need to help them. Tra- training wise, I would uh, yeah. just, without knowing as an expert, expert in yeah. this, I would guess that if you particularly have a one that involves a low thyroid, then mm-hmm. uh, gym training or some type of weight bearing activity would be yep. important as a means yep. of trying to build back a bigger engine, right? Absolutely. But there's just two factors to that, actually. Um, polycystic mm-hmm. ovaries, um, they, it reacts to cortisol really easy. So as you know, maybe doing cardio quite a lot and HIIT training really increases your cortisol now cardio is important for weight loss but what I recommend and what I have found worked for me and what works for clients is weight training so strength training Mm. Mm. in the gym lifting heavy ass weights building lean muscle and increases your BMR it increases Mm. your metabolism so just cutting down the cardio to a bare minimum a lot mm. of people look at me thinking, we're like, what? But no, I'm, you know, it's absolutely true. Cortisol is not good for polycystic ovaries. Well, separate to that, this really underpins our model in the Better Body Academy, yeah. which is you can never outrun a bad eating plan. And if you want to have success with weight management in the long term, you need to build a bigger engine that's constantly yeah. revving at a higher rate. Right. And this is why we absolutely. Yeah. And this is why we recommend, you know, doing some form of resistance training in whatever program that you're actually doing. 
So Nick, um, as, as we kind of build this to an end, um, is there anything that maybe we haven't talked about here that would be worth finalizing the discussion with? Um, just know that you're not stuck in a hole and that you're never not going to lose weight. I know it does feel like it, um, but just, as I say, just look at me and that's why I posted that post again today on my wall, just saying I'm not posting this picture for, um, you know, well done or you say, look, this is my transformation need to be. I posted it for hope. You know, there, there is hope mm. it can be done. All you need is just the help of someone around you giving you guidance on what to do. I think um, I think that's a very good point that you raised there because, like, for me, you know, as a coach, nutrition's my specialty. I know a lot about weight. And the majority of the guys that come into our environment, they, they don't have a specific condition that requires, like, double-down expertise like PCOS does. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you are really what you want to look at, if you're getting a coach and you have PCOS is someone that has suffered with the condition for yeah. a period of time and who has managed to, um, as you mentioned, it's incurable, but gone a long ways to dialing down the symptoms in a major way because you've been there and you've done it. You've got the runs on the yep. board. Mm. Yep. I just say I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt and I've, I've got the proof <laughs> that it absolutely can be done. And, mm. um, but your diet, I just want to throw in there at the end as well. Diet is super important. Do not do keto, please. <laughs> <laughs> please. Honestly, I'm going to say the fuck keto. Honestly, yeah. it's going to mess you up even more because what's going to happen is you need the carbs for your hormone production, your serotonin. If you stop it, then your hormones will go to a place out of whack. And if you eat carbs again, your hormones are just going to go up and down. You're going to put on so much weight and your polycystic ovaries is going to get worse. So mm. please um, don't eat, uh, eat, eat carbs. Don't cut out carbs. Don't do keto. Mm. I love that. And that again, that's just, uh, that's in line with everything we talk about. You know, yeah. the, it's, this, this, is the, this is the frustration with, you know, the fitness industry as a whole. I think you can just prescribe plans until you're black and blue in the face. Yeah. But unless you truly understand how to separate the right knowledge from the bro science, then you're yeah. always going to be stuck, which is, you know, yeah. our whole model is based on that education and empowerment piece. So yeah. uh, on that note, Nick, look, I just want to say, you know, and of course I'm going to be a little bit biased because you're obviously a coach inside our academy, but, um, you know, publicly stating, dude, like your 100 pound transformation is phenomenal but far greater than that is your bravery on being a um you know a leader for women that 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 have a condition like this um yeah. and it not being something that you know needs to necessarily hold them back if they want to do something about it and if they've got the courage to yeah. kind of really face it so thank you yeah. and um yeah super grateful to have you on our team yeah. I'm so happy to be on the team. I love working with all the women. It's so, so good. All the women just now, the amazing transformations that they're all getting is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, it sure is. Okay. Well, look, um, thank you so much for joining us for today's podcast, guys. A reminder, if you would like to come along to the masterclass that we are running next weekend, uh, betterbodyacademy.com forward slash wealthy, W-E-L-L-T-H-Y. We've loved your company here on the Better Body Academy podcast. This is the podcast that you come to. If you're sick of the dumb diets, unsustainable workout programs, this is Nick. I'm Jay. We'll see you in the next episode. Wolves and Warriors, thank you so much for tuning in. If this podcast is hitting the mark for you and giving you the confidence to start your own personal journey, I want you to hit me up on Facebook or head over to my Instagram at jstuart underscore Better Body Academy and DM me with the words Better Body Academy. I want to give you the tools to permanently overhaul your mind and body without dumb diets and unsustainable workout programs. Our mission is to achieve 1 million lives transformed and you, my friend, could be next. So hit me up on Facebook or head over to my Instagram at Jay Stewart underscore Better Body Academy and DM me with the words Better Body Academy and we can have a chat about whether we can help you with your transformation goals.